Hi, I'm Adam Polnikowski presenting Serializer Towards Zero Copy Serialization at AutoS 2021. Uh, let's just begin with some network I.O. background. Uh, zero copy network I.O. has long been a goal in the networking community. Uh, at the same time, we've seen a huge rise in the prominence of distributed applications, uh, which re heavily rely on application level serialization. Unfortunately, this kind of serialization uh, completely obviates all the engineering that has gone into zero copy network I.O. Uh, to illustrate this, you can see the path that a um, serialized RPC message uh, takes on its way out of the host uh, being encoded from uh, the native data in, in main memory, uh, being encoded by, by the CPU through the application, the RPC library, to the encoded format uh, in memory, finally being loaded into the kernel socket buffers, and then being sent out through the NIC queues. Um, you know, this is a relatively arduous process that involves many copies. Uh, and in a truly net, a zero copy network IO world, uh, the goal would be to perform serialization directly between A and D. Um, just a quick refresher on serialization itself for those who may be unfamiliar. Um, serialization is simply the, the translation of a data structure in memory uh, to a format for storage or transmission. Um, such data structures might be nested uh, and contain pointers to different memory locations, be not contiguous. Um, serialization takes care of organizing this data um, and the final serialized format is also architecture and language independent. Uh, so it handles byte order, memory layout, uh, and so on. So when I refer to the encoding part of the serialization process, uh, this is what I'm referring to. Uh, serialization is in fact a, a major performance bottleneck. Google reports that serialization alone is responsible for five to 7% of all CPU cycles in their data centers. And once you factor in the associated RPC cost, this, this is 12% of all cycles in the data center. Uh, so truly, this is a pretty large slice of data center performance that we're trying to address here. Um, this bottleneck is, is not entirely due to inefficiency in the operations, but it's actually just the incredibly high frequency of invocation, um, where a typical service can involve hundreds to thousands of RPCs. Um, and so, you know, as, as network speeds reach or exceed 100 gigabits per second, uh, and common operations start completing in microseconds, uh, serialization becomes more and more of a major source of overhead. To address this, uh, we propose offloading serialization to the NIC. Um, to see why, you know, we initially began with uh, just a study of where the bottleneck comes from. Um, it's it's a combination of memory uh, of memory overhead and compute, but really it is dominated by memory operations. Um, you know, we saw earlier the the, the process and and the, the memory copies that it and the serialization takes as a message uh, is transmitted from the host. Um, there, there are multiple hits here where we lose efficiency. Uh, encoded data from the network uh, results in a cold cache. Uh, encoded data is also only touched once before it is then uh, it pollutes the cache, and then the, um, the decoded data is is then available. Um, and ultimately, involving the CPU and the encoding and decoding means that the native format data must be written back to memory, and you're just traveling up and down the memory hierarchy. Um, you know, you, you would address this typically just by simply using DMA. But we can't because, I mean, we have the actual encoding part of the serialization to do. Uh, you can't just ignore it. So um, you might ask, why, not, why can't we just make software changes? Why, why, um, why not avoid unnecessary hardware acceleration? Well, I mean, various serialization libraries do perform better or worse than others. Uh, there's a variety of trade-offs that you can do. You can trade off human readability for spatial efficiency. You can trade off performance for expressiveness. Uh, you know, for instance, flat buffers is less, less expressive and more efficient than protobuf. Um, but ultimately, you know, none, none of these changes we can make in the software domain address the fundamental problem of the extra memory copy um, going up to the CPU and back down. Um, so ultimately, just the software domain uh, can't, can't address this fundamental problem. Um, you might be tempted to use another CPU. Uh, you, you could exploit some parallelism here to gain extra efficiency. Um, however, CPUs simply aren't optimized for bit level encoding. Um, with protobuf, uh, with, with protobuf variant encoding, the uh, you end up with 25 instructions per byte, which blows up to thousands of instructions per, per message with, with integer members. Um, additionally, such data encodings tend to be sequential, and this, this generates dependency chains with conditional branches, uh, which are challenging to execute efficiently on, efficiently on CPUs. Um, and ultimately, at the, at the end of the day, again, this, this doesn't address the fundamental problem of the extra memory copy. Even with two CPUs, you still have the two trips uh, from memory to the CPU and back. Um, you know, in the in an even more extreme case, you might be tempted to add uh, instructions to the CPU or add a dedicated accelerator. Um, this could address the the 
computational issues we mentioned on the previous slide and, and address bit level encoding uh, more thoroughly. Um, but ultimately, you know, this, this still uh, doesn't address the, the memory system performance. Uh, you still, no matter what, uh, you have the, the, second, um, the second memory copy. So uh, ultimately, any really any application-driven approach undoes the engineering meant to achieve a zero-copy network interface. Um, since it, in, in any of these scenarios, uh, the serialized data travels up the memory hierarchy and then travels back down in decoded form as a second copy. Um, as I mentioned previously, this uses the cache inefficiently. Um, and ultimately, a true zero copy approach requires the NIC to be able to decode the messages before the DMA transfer into main memory or last level cache. Um, we believe this is feasible to do in the NIC um, in kind of in parallel to the renewed interest in transport protocol offload. Um, serialization deserialization is a much simpler process than the transport uh, protocol offload. Um, it's, it's less expensive and it could also share certain elements um, with that offload. Uh, and, and in reality, I mean, the, the very small bandwidth delay product of the modern data center means that NICs truly uh, have enough memory to, to accomplish this. So um, NIC, the NIC uh, ultimately seems like the natural place to put a serialization offload on the DMA path. Um, this leads us to our proposed design of the serializer. On a high level, we simply integrate a, a serialization deserialization pipeline uh, straight into the NIC. The interface that it exposes to applications is very similar to that of modern DMA NICs. Um, and from the application's point of view, RPC messages are essentially automatically um, serialized, deserialized on transmission or reception as they're DMA to from host memory. Um, so from, from the application's point of view, it simply seems that it's sending uh, and receiving native data. Uh, to achieve this, uh, there are a couple of in initialization steps that need to occur. Um, first, the application allocates transmit and receive descriptor rings and transmit and receive arenas and registers, with them registers them with the serializer. Um, these transmit and receive arenas store the RPC message objects. So the host also needs to populate the IOTLB with necessary virtual address to physical, physical address translations. Uh, and finally, with some domain-specific language, such as protobuf, um, a definition of the application's message format is compiled into a message schema that is loaded into the serializer module. Um, once this initialization has been completed, then we have the serialization process. Um, the application allocates and initializes an RPC message in a transmit arena, uh, and it also creates and adds a corresponding descriptor to the transmit descriptor ring, um, and ultimately notifies the serializer with an MMIO write. Finally, then the, uh, the serializer's uh, reader module fetches each field of the message and the encoder independently transforms fields in parallel, uh, leveraging knowledge from the message schema uh, to exploit uh, parallelism and gain any efficiency it can inherent to the schema. Uh, finally, a, a merging module accumulates the transformed fields and combines them into a final serialized message that is sent out on the wire. Um, deserialization is essentially the inverse process. Um, the one uh, catch here is that as opposed to serialization, the serializer actually manages uh, manages the memory management. So there's an additional allocator module. Um, the, parser, the parser module identifies the message type and informs this allocator, uh, which then uses the message schema to, to allocate it in the receiver arena. Um, ultimately, then the, the, decoder, the decoder, similar to the encoder, uh, uses the schema to transform message fields in parallel and write them into the allocated message object. Um, finally, either the, uh, or finally, the serializer creates a um, a received descriptor, and either the application can pull the descriptor or the serializer can be configured to generate an interrupt to the application. Um, we did some preliminary work on benefits and feasibility. Um, initially, uh, to begin with, we, we did a test with um, Intel's Deep Insight Telemetry tool, um, configured once in the standard configuration with Thrift Serialization and Kafka Publishing, um, and uh, otherwise with a kind of toy null publisher such that um, reports would come in uh, just pre-deserialized, um, such as they would with the serializer. Uh, this shows very promising, very promising results with a 3x increase in throughput. Um, we also did some preliminary implementation with a simple Verilog implementation of protobuf variant encoding. Uh, we were able to achieve low cost line rate performance with relatively low Latin um, register legislation, as you can see here. Um, we're currently working on, since the publishing of, of the paper, on further implementation, uh, such that we could have a, a um, a module to test uh, the serializer approach versus a, an alternative coprocessor approach. Uh, thank you so much for watching this presentation, and please reach out to me with question, any questions you may have uh, at the following contact information. Thank you.